what they don't tell you about entrepreneurship. Guys, Kim Barrett here. Today, I wanna to do a video about entrepreneurship, this elusive thing that we all chase and we all wanna be a part of because it's so cool. Um, and one of the biggest things, right, and there's so much that they don't tell you about entrepreneurship when you go out, when you get started, and there's so many things that you very quickly realize when you're out there that aren't exactly what they seem. Everyone's happy to show you the awards, the cool stuff, the travel, the flights, the private jets, the Lambos, all that sort of cool stuff. But they don't show you all of the hard things that go on behind the scenes. Now, the biggest thing that they don't tell you is literally how hard it's going to be. Because every course is gonna tell you that it's simple, make money online, do this, start a business, do that, hire staff. And in reality, it is hard work. Right? What they don't tell you is that it is not sexy. It's not all those Lambos and private jets and all that sort of cool stuff. Don't get me wrong, like I would I'd love to fly around in a private jet all the time. It'd make it way easier for me. I'm a pretty tall dude. My knees get stuck behind behind seats, right? And I also like I get to drive a, a nice car. It's not a Ferrari, but I get to drive one. But that is not the mo like the important part about it. Because unless you are willing to do the hard work, you know, there's no like there's no qualms, there's no problems with working as part of a team, as working in someone else's organization, being an entrepreneur, because it is bloody tough. Like there are late nights, right? There's stress, there's losing your hair, receding hairlines, right? Check that bad boy, it's all kicking back guys, I need some Propecia or something, I don't know, right? But all these things happen and there's stress and it can be hard like yesterday um, as an example like this still happens you know we've we would be potentially perceived as a business that is successful you know but we have um, the days where it gets hard so yesterday it's like I had to have some tough conversations with clients I then had to um, I did podcasts and got to be chipper and chirper for those same with sales calls I was in the office at about 6:45 yesterday and then I left last night at 7 30 p.m. Um, there was no outside meetings yesterday. It was just hustle and grind, hustle and grind. It was it was a hard day. And this morning, back up at it. I was at the gym at 5:30. Was um, at a breakfast meeting with the team, and then we're out and we'll, we're back in it again. And we'll be here till um, late this evening. And we're always on call, right? There's like things happen. People blow up my messenger inbox. People send me SMSs. People DM me on Instagram. You know, there's so many ways for people to communicate with you now that they will, right? They're gonna hustle you down and find you. So it, it's not all glamour. It's not all glitz. It's not all. It's not all what it looks like on, on social media, right? There's plenty of tough things that happen. So. The biggest thing I think is that, you know, you've got to be willing to do it. It's like, yes, you get into entrepreneurship for many different reasons, whatever it might be for you, but you need to always make sure it weighs up for you. For me, the ability to do the, have freedom, to choose what I want to do, to be able to direct the business in which way I want to go, I think is worth it, like 110%. So when I first started my um, business, the reason why was because I was working in a company, they were a great company, don't get me wrong, but the way that the business operated means that we, at Christmas time, we had to work on the days that weren't public holidays because we worked with a lot of people in China, in Vietnam, and all different um, races, cultures, religions, which meant that a lot of them didn't celebrate Christmas. Christmas didn't mean that their businesses stopped. Like they had a new year and things like that. They had Chinese New Year later. So there was a whole bunch of different things going on. Now, what I found to be the case was that that meant that we had to be there. If an order came through, if they wanted to order something from us, we had to be available. The whole office couldn't shut down for a period or we couldn't just work from home for it because we had samples we had to do. It was in the industry of grain trading. We had to provide all these things to them and if they called up an order, we had to take out a Forex cover and all this sort of stuff. So we had to be able to be there for that. So unless it was a public holiday, we literally had to be in the office. And for me, at Christmas time, like I like to spend time with my family. We go up um, north of Perth, we go to Lancelin, uh, where my grandma lives. We hang out with them, with my auntie and uncle, with our cousins, and we, we celebrate and we relax and we have a good time. But when I was told that I couldn't have those days off, or you know, it would have to balance it depending on who else wanted those days off or what the other people in the office were doing, to me, that didn't sit right. That was, I was like, well, I work pretty hard all year. I work well, and this time of year, I wanna have the time to go and spend with my family, and I can't, because someone else is dictating that for me. Now, again, as I said, that was great people, it was a great company to work for, but it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to be able to go, great, if I need to go and do something, if I wanna go and do something, I should be able to. I should be able to take that, so I'm willing to take 
the heat, the long days, the stress, the com hard conversations with the clients, hard conversation with staff, hard conversation with suppliers. I'm willing to do all that because I enjoy that freedom and that ability to be able to do that and grow a business, right? And for me, number one, that's just that just means that I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to go through those things. Number two thing you need to think about is that once you become an entrepreneur, what they don't tell you about is your literally like the responsibility, physical, emotionally, <laughs> spiritually, whatever you want to say, that you then have to other people. Because it's not just you, if you become an entrepreneur and you start growing a business, you are literally responsible for other people's lives that number one are your clients and number two are your staff. So number one, you have to ensure that you give and you do the best job possible, right? You have to be able to do the best job possible for um, your clients to ensure that their lives go well, that everything continues and works well for them. And then for your staff, you become not only responsible for them, but responsible for their entire families. And that is a big responsibility because not only are you responsible for yourself, you're responsible for your potential um, staff members, their family, their children, their mums, dads, uncles, cousins, everyone that's related to them, you become responsible for. So if you're willing to take on that responsibility, great, but that's one of the things that they don't tell you is that that becomes a big part of the responsibility of entrepreneurship. And yes, they can sell you on all the sexy dreams, all the sexy aspirations, all the sexy products and services that you're gonna be able to then do, all the cool awards. However, there's a big other side to it that you need to understand, right? You need to understand, you need to be able to also be adaptable because what happens is you start to have to be responsible for finances, you have to become responsible for taxation, for payroll, for superannuation, for all these different things that previously you weren't. And a lot of times if you just go into it and you fly by the seat of your pants, you're going to have a bad time, right? It's not going to work. And guys, you have to be responsible, be willing to take on that responsibility. If you are great, if not, that's cool. Just rock and roll with the job. There's no problem with doing that, right? So guys, that is it. Not to put a damper on your entrepreneurship dreams, but to tell you this is what things are like. So I wish you all the best. And if you're rocking it and you're enjoying our channel, please make sure you give us a like. You drop a little comment and let me know what you thought of the video. And as always, subscribe so you can see it first before anyone else. Hope that you guys have an amazing rest of your day. As always, I'm Kim Barra. You've been awesome. I will chat to you all very soon. Adios.